Hi there everyone, this is uh, Russ Douglas 222 again. Uh, I'm in the Brucey Bonus Man Cave and uh, we're about to bring you some target cam info. And this is at the end of our little recording session but I just wanted to mention something I didn't mention earlier. This whole, this whole video is a little bit specialist, it's not for the average man in the street. It was requested by a couple of folk on the Night Vision forum. I'll put the link to the Night Vision thread in the uh, description below and people were asking about homebrew builds for downrange target cams. So that's what you're watching. Over to Bruce. Okay, some people in the Night Vision Forum requested the information about target cams. There were obviously lazy buggers like me who didn't like walking all the way up to the target to see what they had shot. They wanted to be able to sit back at the firing point and see how their bullets are going. And actually, if you're shooting something like a night vision scope or a thermal scope, it's a pretty useful feature to have rather than having to walk back and forth in the dark. So a while back I decided I would try to build a what is colloquially called a target camera, a target camera. And I've gone through a lot of that work here, built three now, and thought I'd let you see what I've done. That'll show you what not to do, and hopefully at the end I'll show you my latest version, which I think is quite good and that'll maybe be, be the one that you would want to try yourself without having to spend money on the stuff that I tried and didn't work. So the version one is all inside this box and it consists of this camera. Now this is, I think this is a two megapixel camera but it's not wireless, it's hardwired. If I left some of these bits and pieces out here. inside the box is basically a, a, a Wi-Fi router and a battery. The battery powers the Wi-Fi router and it powers the camera. The camera is hardwired to the Wi-Fi router and then you've got a selection of different Wi-Fi aerials that you can plug into the box, either a rubber ducky type aerial like this or a flat panel like this which gives you a bit more range. This camera has got zoom and focus but it's a manual zoom and a manual focus and the and the, the lens in this camera goes from 2.8 to 12 millimeters um, now even at 12 millimeters the field of view is still quite wide so the camera has to be quite close to the target to be able to see the target in enough detail to see the holes from bullets so obviously the camera has to be off the side as well, it can't be in the firing line otherwise you're going to be putting bullets through the camera. So the camera has to be off the side, it has to be fairly close which means you're looking at the target from quite a steep angle which doesn't give you the best image. However, it does work, um, I've used it, it's not bad but as you can see there's this cable, there's this box, there's a bit of faffing around and all this stuff has to be up at the firing point. Now normally you would mount the camera maybe on a, a tripod, something like this, um, and that would you could once it's set up you could you could leave it and go back to the firing point and uh, and do your shooting. And is that is that an, um, you've got an illuminator built into the... The, the? All these cameras come with LEDs built in. So if you were if you were actually trying to zero a night vision scope. Um, and it was in the darkness, the, night, the LEDs, the IR LEDs would come on and illuminate the target. In fact, that can be a bit of an issue because it, at the range that you would have to have this camera from the target to be able to see the, the holes clearly, the IR would be flooding the target boards and the light, the light being reflected from the targets could easily white out the camera on your night vision scope. So, sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes it's not such a good thing. Because it would be surrounded by black in the background, wouldn't it? That's right. From a distance. That's right. And there's so much light reflected from the white paper of the targets yeah. that it just tends to white out the scope. Yeah. So that was my first attempt. It's not bad, but the whole thing with the router and, and again, my limited IT skills meant I had a real nightmare trying to get the router to speak to my tablet getting the Wi-Fi to work and then getting the app set up to be actually to be able to actually see the picture on the on my tablet. It was a bit of a nightmare. I think it took me about three days to figure out 
how to set the how to set the router up and then how to set the app up on the phone. So I say that worked, um, but I wasn't really satisfied with it. And build build cost the whole thing? That well, I think around ballpark numbers, you're looking at about 150 quid for that. Okay. And I notice you've got a, a little patch of alloy on the top of the lid <laughs> to, to stick on your. Uh... The, the alloy on top of the lid. The alloy on top of the lid is basically a, a nice cup. smooth part su for surface for mounting the long range antenna on. Right. The, the the pad needs to be kept fairly smooth and polished for right. to be able to get it sticky. So that's your long range Wi-Fi antenna. Yeah, that's this along and this basically has to point back at the firing line. The foot the, the rubber ducky aerials, the foot aerials, they are what they call omnidirectional. They transmit in all directions around so there'll always be some signal going back to the firing line. But obviously because so much of the signal's not going back to the firing line, that limits how much signal you get back there. And these typically are going to give you about 100, maybe 150 yards range. Um, whereas the directional one, <coughs> where virtually <coughs> all the radiation is going right back to the firing line, there's a lot more to be detected back there. You get a stronger signal, so you can move the thing back and get more range. As I say, I've had these working at 600, 650 yards, which is probably more than most people would be shooting at on a, on a range day. Yeah. So that was my that was my first attempt. So I really wanted to get rid of the Wi-Fi router and that big box and all the other stuff that came with it. So I started looking for cameras that had a what they call AP hotspot cameras, which contained their own Wi-Fi hotspot, so that you could connect directly to them with a with a smartphone or with a tablet and not have to go through a router and you know there not be any wiring. So. I found this little camera here, which cost less than 30 quid, <laughs> which I thought was unbelievable. And, you know, you never get anything for nothing really at the end no. of the day. It worked. It transmitted a signal. I could use the flat panel um, antenna and get a picture at 600 yards. I was able to put a small 12 volt lithium battery in this box and it's really very, very light. Um, very easy and, and, very, and, and getting it hooked up was a lot simpler as that, well. That looks almost portable enough that you're small enough that you could have several for different ranges. You could indeed have that. Yes, yep. You would, but the only problem would be you would, you would be continually changing wireless networks right. to change ranges. Right. You, you could have three. You could have three tablets, of course, or three telephones, or you know, you could have three different people shooting each one hooked up with their device to a different camera. Yeah. The problem with these is the lens. It comes with a very, very wide angle lens, typically about three or four millimeter lens, which means that the field of view is very, very wide. So again, you have this problem of getting very close to the target before you can actually see enough detail in the target to see the holes. Uh, I actually changed the lens of this from a four millimeter to a 16 millimeter because it's a standard M12 lens, but that really didn't help the problem. It allowed me to come back a little bit more because the field of view was narrower, but the image quality was rubbish. It's a two megapixel camera, fixed focus, no zoom, um, and I really have not been able to get a satisfactory quality image. I was really disappointed because I th everything else about this thing was absolutely super. The size, the weight, the price, I mean, this whole thing went together for about 60 quid. It simply wasn't a it wasn't a sharp enough picture to be able to see the holes in the target clearly when you had the camera positioned at a, a sensible distance from the target and out, out of the line of fire. So unfortunately that one didn't make the grade. <laughs> but having learned from the first one and having learned from the second one, I decided I knew enough about it now to, to go and actually build something that would do the job. And I'll show you now what, I've, what my latest version is. Right. Well, hey. This is um, a lot bigger and heavier and more expensive than anything I've done before, but this thing does work. The camera itself costs 150 quid, but it's a 5 megapixel camera. It's got pan and tilt, and so the camera has got 20 it, power zoom lens in it. Brilliant. So the actual camera lens is going from about 4.5 millimeters to 90 millimeters. 
which means I can stand the camera off well out of the line of fire and zoom right, optically zoom right into the target and see the target very clearly. So, Brilliant. obviously, it's still obviously uh, has its own Wi Fi hotspot. The antenna that comes with it is good for about 100 yards again. And again, if we replace it with the flat panel antenna, this type, which you can just put onto this housing on the back, plug you've got, it into the. You've got a spigot, you've got an adapter. I've got a spigot there. I'll do this in a minute. Okay. Plug that in, fire it up, have this pointing back. Because it's on a, a spigot, I can have the camera pointing in the direction. I can have this pointing in any direction. As long as this is pointing back towards the firing line, you're going to get 600 yards easy. Right. Quick question for me as a layman. Um, that's obviously, it's, it's a commercial transmitter, um, and there's no gun sights on it. How easy is that to line up with your 650 oh, metre away? Easy. Right. Uh, okay. I mean, the, the, if you think of cool. that as being something like, it, it's, I can't remember the angle it's, it's firing at. Right. But I mean, it's ballpark. It's ballpark. You, you don't have yeah. to gun sight line It's not up. like one degree, two no, degrees. No, 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 no. It's just cool. roughly in the general direction of is good enough. Excellent. Excellent. This, the box that the camera is mounted on kind of forms the, the, the sort of the centre of the whole thing. We use the same sort of battery, about 3000 milliamp battery, 12 volt lithium. That's basically glued inside the box, an on off switch, a power indicator to tell you that the, the power is on, and a socket. Fuck, which is just this socket here Excellent. to allow you to charge the battery up. Brilliant. Now, if you you'll go, you'll get a, you'll see the thing doing its own. That's what it's doing at the moment is it's going through its sort of setup procedure when you put the power on. On the underside of the box, one of these I've got one of these quick release plates that connects directly into the. So the, that, the top of the tripod. That's a, that's a classic camera tripod quick release. Yeah, then. yeah. That's, that's what the, you can buy the plates loose from eBay, that's a classic quick release plate yep. and it comes with the standard quarter UNC thread so if I wanted to use for example my Primus trigger sticks rather than that I could simply unscrew this there's a quarter UNC hole in the bottom of the box which will the, tri the Primus trigger sticks will screw straight into Brilliant So I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll stick this up on, on the tripod and there we go Right. There. Okay. Wi Fi transmitter on the spigot via a little Brucey bonus bracket. So, with that bracket, you can yep. turn it around about any way up and down you want. Direct it, yeah. Yeah, get that pointing where you want. That's right. pretty much how you would be set up for a long range. Let's say you were shooting in a 300 yard range, you would use the long range antenna. That would be pointing back at the firing line, yep. 300 yards up this way. The camera would then be off to one side of the firing line and back probably three, four metres from the target. Yeah. Um, so that the angle to the target is not too steep, so the target doesn't look too weird. And you were telling me you've been able to use this 50, 60, 70 meter, 80 yeah, meters? Yeah, we, we tried it out um, on a series of targets at 60, 70 and 80 yards and we set the camera up just short of the 60 yard target looking at the 60 yard target we are able to get a good picture on that and then we simply panned round focused on the 70 yard target we were able, were able to see that perfectly well obviously a little bit more zoom yeah. And then we panned around a bit more and looked at the 80 yard target and again with a bit more zoom we were able to see the 80 yard target perfectly clearly. And you see the bullet holes? We were able to see the bullet holes, yep. yep. Excellent. So what kind of calibre was that? That was a 2-2 uh, rimfire. Okay. 2-2 two -two rimfire, where Davey and I were both shooting our 2-2 our two -two rimfires that day. So, and it, the board that I've got at the bottom end of the garage here is also 2-2, two -two. there's 2-2 two -two holes in it. And we'll, so, what? What I'll do is, I'll, the camera, the camera at the moment is basically five yard, five meters away from five meter line there. With the that's tape. a five meter line. And to start the target board is there, five meters away, next to the garage. I'll fire up the camera. I'll get my 
forever. It's going to spin around through its self check then. So, and, and how much did you say this will this complete? This would, this would be more, this is significantly more expensive than the other two. I would say you're looking at probably 250 quid for this. Given the, the camera costs 150, uh, the tripod's about 20, the flat panel antennas are only about 8 or 9 quid, the box is about 20 quid, probably the best part of 30 quid for a battery. If you're not into soldering and, and doing wiring, then you can simply, you can simply hang the, the battery, the battery can plug straight into the wiring harness. Camera says thank you. <laughs> so inside the box, basically, the camera comes with the wire and harness. All these wires come out of the camera. That's why you can't see them because the way I've run them into the box. So you've got the power connector, 12 volt power connector. So if you didn't want to build all this stuff, you simply buy a little battery like this and just plug it in, and you're right. good to go. You don't need the switch and all the rest of it, and you can recharge your battery through that one. The other connectors that are on here are, this is actually a reset switch if you ever need to reset the camera for any reason. This is your standard network connector if you want to use it hardwired. If you okay. want to use it, rather than use it as a wireless camera, use it as a, a, a hardware camera. And these cameras actually have an audio link as well. Um, it, it comes with a wee loudspeaker that you can plug in there. Okay. Um, I can't imagine we would use it, but I think the idea is that if you have one of these as a home security camera and it's, let's say it's near your front door and somebody comes to your door, you can see them and you can also speak to them. Because right. they would, it's a, it's a microphone two, loudspeaker. Two-way two comms, yeah. Two-way comms um, for, for that. But obviously that's not something that's really of, of interest to what we're doing with this. So that's, that's basically what's in the box. Okay, okay so <clears throat> obviously to be able to see the video coming from the camera, you need some sort of device. And, and because this is Wi-Fi, any, as far as I'm aware, any Android or, or uh, Apple device with the appropriate app can can uh, view the video stream that's coming back from the camera. So this is just a, a Samsung tablet. Samsung tablet, nothing fancy. You could be using you could be using a mobile phone. Um, there are quite a few different apps out there that claim to be able to view the video stream from a camera such as this. I've tried heaps of them, including the app that the manufacturer recommends, and most of them simply don't work. Or I have not been able to get them to work. I've, I've found one, one app that does, and I'm, I'm sticking with that. Anyway. First thing you've got to do is obviously connect your the, your tablet to the Wi-Fi signal from the camera. Okay. So if I go into settings, it's listing all the various Wi-Fi networks, and this the camera is IPCAM 065747. Now, right. if you even if you bought a camera exactly the same as that, that number wouldn't be the same. It'd be, it's unique to each camera. Right. So. And it, because I had already played with this, it's already connected up right. to it. Um, I think if it's the first time you connect it, you have to put in a password, and the password I think is one two three four five six seven eight. Right. Okay. Nothing, nothing complicated. <laughs> if that doesn't work, try oh one two three four five six seven. Yeah. So we've, we're now the, la the the tablet is now connected to the camera. So if I go home, the app that I use is called. Tiny Cam Monitor. Okay. You can see I've got others here that I've tried, but the one that I find works best for me is called Tiny Cam Monitor. And I've I've used it with other cams, so hopefully, let me turn it like that. Which way is the camera? Camera's facing the filing cabinet. There we go. Man. So I know it's right. it's now. So because I've used other cameras with this app, it's got them stored in its right. memory and it's looking for pictures from all of them and the only one it's finding a picture from right. is this one. So so now we've got 
So the camera's looking at, and then the bottom corner of the screen here, these are these controls are for pan and tilt. So uh -huh. right. It's not the fastest, but we get there. So if I turn that back down towards the target. Yeah. You see all my secrets in my garage here. <laughs> right, so here's the target. The camera autofocuses, obviously. And this is a zoom control. I can slide this up and down for zoom. Come on, zoom. Why are you need zooming? There we go. Ah. Ah, wrong way. Okay. So at the moment, we, when we zoomed, it was optical zoom. Yeah. Right. But I think you can still do this. You can still. I can still do that. Ah, right. But frankly. That's digital. That's digital zoom, and you can see what it does to the image. Yes. It pixelates it quite badly. Yeah. So we don't really want to use that kind of zoom. Now we're at five meters. We've got some zoom in. You can still see the bullet holes. But if I go on a bit more, that was probably a bit too much. Of course, the the pan and tilt gets a bit of, gets a bit um, sensitive when you yep. use high level. Because we're at we're at times eleven zoom at the moment. Right. But you can clearly see the holes in the target there. Yeah. And that's five meters away. Yeah. As I, long as it's out of the firing line, it's not going to get hit by any down downrange rounds. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly. I've put I've put a, I've put the ruler down there, um, and what I'm going to you can see you can see the, the ruler. You can't read the graduations at this point, but we're only in times eleven zoom. So if I zoom in a bit, mark zoom now. I'm at times twenty. Yeah. So you can certainly read the. The five millimeter graduation, you can pretty much read the one millimeter graduation. Yep, yep, I can see that. So that's telling you the sort of resolution of the. So it's re resolution is one millimeter, and that's at five. Well, I'm on one millimeter, which if you work it out, is point, point two two millirads or something like that. I did do right. the calculations. Right. But but going but using that number, if you think of that as being a point two two caliber hole, yep. say five point five millimeters. We should be able to take the camera back 27 and a half metres and just about be able to see that. Right. Which you wouldn't want to do, obviously. No. But there you can see, I mean, there's just anything, anything hitting that target, no problem at all. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. I did have another app. It's called Handy Spotter. Let's see if it'll work. Uh, right. This is Handy Spotter. And it actually saves shots okay okay so if I, if I say capture shot and it and then I then I move to somewhere else okay, let's say we started with a new target with no holes in it yeah and I fired a shot yeah and then I said capture shot it would capture that Got you. with just one hole in the target then if I fired a second shot and said capture shot it would show it would capture that with two shots in the target and so on I could capture a a string of shots, and then when I play them back, I can see each shot hitting the target. Yeah. Um, now, and it's actually a very good image. You can see the image is excellent. Yeah. The problem is the pan and tilt on it is bloody useless. Mm -hmm. If I can, for a minute. here we go. For the, for the pan and tilt controls. Uh, you know, it's it's so slow. Now, when you hit pan, you go put the kettle on for a cup of tea, and when you come back after having had your tea and biscuit, it's just about thinking about getting ready to move. Oh, right. Um, which is, that's why I, I, have, no, I have not used it. Right. Um, but but taking, taking screen caps is useful. Here we go, here we go. Here's up, down, right, and left. Here's the pan and tilt controls. Right. Fuck off. Right, so, so that's me telling it to pan right. Put, put a kettle on, Russ. Talk amongst yourselves, lads. Aye, that's right, aye. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, my goodness. That's slow. 
and it stacks up the commands. So if you if you you hit right and then you hit up, it'll do the right five minutes later, and then a wee bit after that it'll do the up. So right, you can use it if you don't want to to move it. If you want to get the camera set up, that's fine. Yeah, but it's see that's me telling to, to, to unzoom now. It just <laughs> as I say that the cut. The the capture part is okay, but, okay. The, but the control part is, is rubbish. Right. Okay. So there we go. Okay, cool. Okay. So back on tiny cam. Back on, back on tiny cam, and if you use this app, you have to set the app up to find the feed from the camera. And it's right. come under a section in the app called Manage Cameras. So anytime you add a new camera, you've got to basically tell tell the app. What the camera is and how, how to how to look where to look for the feed from the camera. Right. So under manage cameras, I've got these. I've, you can see I've got quite a few cameras. Uh, IP cameras, what we're using, and if you go into edit, that then lists the settings for the camera. Mm -hmm. Now I'm I am not an IT guy. Mm -hmm. I'm not an expert. You've got to fool me. That this took me a while, but most of these cameras have got this thing called O N V I F ONVIF. I don't know what it stands for. Right, but this camera is on VIF Profile S, and that made things a lot easier. So, right. so that, the, the little camera I tried second time around that was a nightmare. Right. Um, the other thing is basically all you need to do then is put in the IP address of the camera, which should come with the camera. Okay. And then you put this on VIF port number in 8080, and then this protocol, which is this RTSP over TCP, blah, 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 blah. Um, and that, then it works, and you can test it. it says camera start is okay. You can test, and it, it'll tell you what it's doing. Twelve and a half frames a second, which is obviously not movie quality. No, but, but for what we are doing, it's perfectly no. adequate. You're not going to fire more than uh, twelve shots well, a second well, from a exactly. bolt action rifle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, the, one of the things about it is that one of the, I mean, people are usually moan and groan about the lag with Wi-Fi. Right. But actually, it works for you here because you can actually shoot at the target, then look at the screen and see the bullet hitting because of the Wi-Fi lag. <laughs> it's true, you can. Yeah, excellent. So, excellent. That's it. Okay. That's pretty much it. And thanks, Bruce. I think I'm gonna this this one I'm gonna stick with now. I'm happy. I've got a system. That I'm happy with how it works, and the, the range and the quality of the image. Um, this will this will do me. I've got no plans to do anything more than this. Right. Two two um, sort of uh, off the cuff questions. Um, you, you've you've mentioned the cost. We can see how portable it is. Um, what kind of weather resistance does this have? The camera is according to the EBA listing for the camera is it's it's an outdoor rated camera. Right. So it should be at least IP sixty six. But you've drilled various holes in the ca casing and added various plugs and yeah. sockets so yeah. although actually the, bo the box does have a rubber sealing ring around there so the box would be sealed but to be honest is that an al alloy box yeah it's an alloy box i wouldn't be using that in the piddling ring no i wouldn't be out i wouldn't be on the range if it was chucking it down or if it was really really inclement weather okay um so that that the waterproofedness doesn't really bother me a light shower of rain is not going to touch it okay I did do some tests on how much current it drew. Obviously, if you're panning and tilting and zooming, it's drawing more power when you're doing that. Yeah. But once you're set up, um, I reckon you'll get probably a full day out of that. It doesn't draw a lot of current when it's just sitting streaming video. No, um, brilliant. Um, so, and and because of the way I've set it up, I've got two or three of these batteries. Okay. If it did die, I'd just simply plug another battery in and carry on. Excellent, excellent, brilliant.